thousands of passengers still stranded at airports across the nation and around the world. Just hope we get home. <laughs> Halloween, we got the kids at home. And tonight, word some airports in the storm zone could stay closed for days. It's closed after damage to the system was called the worst in its 108-year history. Meanwhile, massive fire in a beachfront neighborhood in Queens, New York, destroyed nearly 100 homes overnight and into the morning. Firefighters have been blocked from getting to the fire due to the high floodwaters. And, as we told you yesterday, a construction crane that collapsed due to high winds remained dangling atop a 74-floor luxury high-rise. Thousands were ordered to leave nearby buildings. More than 8 million homes are still without power today across 20 states. The worst of it is in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And as you can see from this next picture, which was just sent to us by one of the state senators uh, from New Jersey, Bob Menendez, um, it, it's, it's just pretty incredible. And you see the water and the flooding, and it hasn't receded like it did in some places. In Queens, New York, a storm-related fire burned through an entire neighborhood, destroying 80 homes. And today, I went out there. We drove out to see the destruction for ourselves, and we saw emergency vehicles everywhere. And I'm not talking, everyone, just about fire trucks and a few ambulances. At one point, on the way to Breezy Point, New York, which is where this happened, we passed a convoy of 19 ambulances. 19 ambulances, all heading in to help that tight-knit community, which was hit with flooding and then fire. Deb Farrick is still out there tonight, and Deb, I know it is a chaotic scene. So can you tell us what's happening right now? Yeah, well, you know what's interesting? Think about it, Aaron. 24 hours ago, that's the point when that huge 7 to 10 foot wave simply slammed into this part of Breezy Point. We are now learning, according to the NYPD, that a police officer uh, did die in this area. Details right now coming in, so uh, we're trying to get additional details. But think about it. 24 hours ago, all of these homes they were standing this is the car the heat the intensity extraordinary now we can see a couple of chimneys we can see the foundations of buildings and again these burned out shells of vehicles it is so dark Aaron right now and that's because all of the electricity and um, my heater went my washer and dryer went the air conditioner condenser went it came in, went into my den. Trying to dry out and prepping for a possible week without power. You'll, you'll live through it. Believe yeah. me, honey, you'll live through it. The cooks weren't the only ones who stayed. We took a ride with the National Guard. Followed firefighters checking on people door to door. Both groups running rescue missions all day. And from some who had to run those dicey rescues last up until just a little a few minutes ago i think the order was you should evacuate but around noon kenosha county's voluntary evacuation order is lifted and a flood advisory is issued for a much smaller portion of the county's southeast corner wave mcgettin are calling it up in milwaukee carter o'brien has lived in this area of lakeshore drive for more than 40 years and we're not having you know the effects that they're predicting he's seen more gawkers than water tuesday and is frustrated by the high water height Oh, that's right, Diane. It will be a long, tough night here in Little Ferry, New Jersey. There was a family that was rescued from this home right here just a few seconds ago. There are cars like this one stranded around this neighborhood. And back there, inside, where those homes are, there are crews trying to make sure that everyone gets to safety. And we want to show you some pictures to give you an idea of what it looked like here in this neighborhood all day today. There were crews trying to make sure people were getting out of their homes and to some were safe. More than 1,500 rescues across New Jersey today 161 water rescues in new york including 19 pets also there are about 24 people who were rescued in virginia they also were stranded in their homes now it is heartbreaking to talk to a lot of the people who are safe able to get out of their homes but still really really trying to comprehend how serious all this was and everything that they lost and now have to deal with rebuilding and figuring out how they will move forward from here. Here in New Jersey tonight, they are also getting help from rescue teams that will be coming from Florida and Missouri, trying to make sure that everyone gets somewhere safe. And President Obama is expected to be here touring, surveying this damage tomorrow. Right in front of me here, one of the rescue teams walking through this neighborhood, making sure people are getting to safety. Diane, back over to you. They are incredible. 1,500 rescues today. What teams they have out there. Thank you, 
Alex and back in New Four tonight. Okay, I lost IFB when I oh, when I threw the bike. Problems at hand. Jeff. Greg Boswell of Sika just outside Atlantic City, New Jersey. Craig, thanks. The White House says the president plans to visit Jersey tomorrow to get a first-hand look at the storm damage. He'll join Governor Chris Christie. We'll hear from the president, and Governor Christie will be with us here in Fox Report for an interview coming up minutes from now. And as I report... Overtime, Democrats are hammering him for what he said at a debate last year when asked if some of FEMA's responsibilities should be turned over to the states. Absolutely. Every time you have an occasion to take something from the federal government and send it back to the states, that's the right direction. And if you can go even further and send it back to the private sector, that's even better. Romney wouldn't answer questions about that today. Governor, would you eliminate FEMA as your president? Even with all the canceled events, the campaign continues. Bill Clinton led a pro-Obama rally in Minneapolis. They are going through. Senator Schumer also said, Shep, that this reminded him of nothing more than the images of London during the Blitz of World War II. And when you look at those homes totally destroyed, those chimney stacks, the only things left standing, it is hard to argue with that sort of image. Shep? Jonathan Hunt on a sad night at Bre Breezy Point and after the storm in the 40s tonight there with no power. And as the dangerous storm heads to the west, it's kicking up waves in the Great Lakes near record heights. We'll go live to Chicago where officials are warning folks don't even get close to the water. Plus that same wide reaching storm has already dumped more than two feet of snow in one state. And it's still coming. We'll show you which areas could be next. From the journalist. <laughs> Can you describe what happened when the water came? We were sleeping, my daughter and I. All of a sudden, the water came in like a river. And unfortunately, uh, some of the people who may still be in those towns aren't out of the woods yet. We were told by a city official that uh, that river kind of brings another high tide in right about now in the evening. And so they may not be out of the woods yet. It won't be as devastating as the initial surge that flooded the area, but they're getting another high tide right about now, Aaron. All right, Brian Todd, thank you very much. And still out front, left hanging, crumpled metal dangles right now, hundreds of feet above New York, forcing evacuations and stopping traffic. And Sandy's effect on the presidential election, it could be significant. ...is stuck there, and this is going to be very difficult to get out because they, they've got to figure out a way. I mean, someone's just going to evaporate eventually, but uh, they need to get the sand out and get a channel out to try and let this water drain. Getting rid of this water, you see people uh, pumping water and doing all kinds of things. It's a, it's a big problem, the water that's gotten trapped behind the dune. So that's down by Atlantic City in the Margate area. Doubts what she says would work better. Plus, years, high has become normal. And soon, runways, taxiways, even gates flooded at the Bayside Field. The wild card in all of this is, of course, what's going to happen at LaGuardia Airport. How long is it going to take for them to clean up the water and then clean up the debris? U.S. Airways, a major carrier on the East Coast, the busiest air corridor in the world has planes lined up at its Charlotte, North Carolina hub, ready to go, repositioning its fleet for a restart everywhere, but at LaGuardia, Newark, and JFK tomorrow morning. As far as New York goes, we really have to wait and see. Uh, damage, we have to assess what kind of damage has been done and uh, what kind of fixes need to be made. It's not been just a Northeast problem. The ripple effect is nationwide. Look at this map by Flightstat. As the storm approaches Sunday, delays marked in red begin. By landfall Monday, thousands of cancellations across the country. There is an impact on every other airport because so many people are trying to fly to and from uh, the East Coast. Even today, out on the West Coast, passengers are still in long lines and staring at cancellation boards. Got in the line and they said, Chicago flights are canceled, get in another line. Across the country, frustration mixed with resignation. These two New Yorkers stuck in New Orleans an extra few days, making the most of it. I'd rather be having a good time with my friends than be stuck in a storm. For the rest of America stranded, flights home begin tomorrow. Jim Avila, ABC News, Washington. Sandy uprooted trees there, cut off power to thousands, forced city schools closed. And just to the west in Chicago, 
We're talking waves as high as two-story buildings on Lake Michigan. The waves are bad out there. You can see from Lakeshore Drive, you don't want to be out there at all. Tying all the lines, make sure everything's, you know, secure, and then, uh, you know, hoping that everything's fine and protecting the boat. Two-story waves in a lake. With us now from WFOD Fox News Chicago is Amber Walker. Amber, these are near record waves for Lake Michigan, right? Oh, that is right, Shepard. The height of the waves reaching a near record, measuring in at nearly 22 feet tall. The highest waves recorded were last year at about 23 feet. And it's quite feasible that we can break a record in the next few hours overnight or in the early morning hours. And that's because the National Weather Service uh, says that we can reach waves as high as 25 here, 25 feet here on Lake Michigan. But overall, for us Chicagoans, this is truly a, a rare, uh, intriguing, and really dramatic event for all of us. We are not used to this, these huge, powerful waves just uh, slamming into the seawall here. We've seen dozens of onlookers come out all day today. They brought their cameras in tow. They were snapping photos, capturing some video. And one of the guys out here told me that this doesn't look like a lake to him. It looked like an angry ocean. We are under a flood warning until about 4 o'clock tomorrow. The lakefront, as you can see, has been closed off. There's a barricade up there with the police tape. There's some lights flashing. Uh, city officials, along with police, have been out here telling folks to stay off the lakefront, uh, particularly the bike and pedestrian path, which is usually packed at this time of night. Uh, it's essentially washed out right now. And again, officials just out here telling folks to just stay away or get swept away. Shepard? Amara Walker from Fox News Chicago. Amara, thanks. Let's get to meteorologist Janice Dean. Oh, the hospital is back on Con Edison's power. <clears throat> uh, we're still working, I think, for, uh, for Staten Island University across the street where they do all the dialysis. We're waiting to get that back online because that's extremely important. There's a lot of dialysis patients and all there's four different dialysis centers. They're all uh, blizzard warnings across the Appalachians. These snow totals are incredible. Over two feet, Red House, Maryland, uh, West Virginia. And speaking of West Virginia, I believe we have some video to show you from that snow, from what was Hurricane Sandy. This is Beckley, West Virginia, uh, just an hour southeast of Charleston. Whoa. Light snow right now, 32 oh degrees. Wind chill feels like 24. Uh, winds gusting to 20 miles per hour. So, I mean, it's winter time in these parts. And the snow is going to continue to fly over the next 24 to 36 hours. There's your future radar. The low pressure very slow to inch into Canada. You still see that counterclockwise rotation, but things will start to improve along the coast. But you can see those lingering snow showers all along the spine of the Appalachians. Wow, it is incredible. Janice Dean, thanks. Many thousands of... And the subway in New York City becomes a swamp. This is the first time ever. They're pretty massive trucks that we've seen going in there with wheels that are almost as tall as I am uh, going into these flood areas to try to pull people out. So they're using all these resources, but some of the high clearance trucks have actually had to be turned back because the water was just too dangerous. Again, you know, the, the fall of darkness is really hindering them right now. They, they just say it's too dangerous to go right back in now. It's just too dark and, and too dangerous. So they're going to try again at first light, James. And I have a very quick question. We're almost out of time, but what about security? Is National Guard there making sure that everybody who's left their homes, that their property is safe? There are a lot of National Guardsmen being deployed in this entire area. We've talked to some who are uh, aiding in the rescue of these three towns. So they are all over the place. But the question is, are there going to be enough of them? And that's still kind of to be determined. There's still a lot of towns here without power, a lot of towns that are still flooded out. And so there may not be enough National Guardsmen to have complete security around here. That's a major concern, Jane. On the other side, Brian Todd, thank you so much for your excellent reporting. On the other side, we're going to go to Manhattan, uh, where there are extraordinary developments. Stay right there. Continues to be a problem. You see the tree behind us here. You can see how it's coated. Well, imagine all the trees in this area absolutely packed and loaded down with all of that snow, very heavy, wet snow. The trees are coming down, the power lines are coming down, and that's what's causing the circumstance here to be just so dire as we head into the nighttime hours. Good news in Kingwood, they turned the lights back on, but in many other areas, over 200,000, 250,000 without electricity in this state, so far only one fatality. Uh, there is some good news, they talk about opening the ski resorts. 
which is the only bright spot, I think. Uh, I guess, and obviously that could, once things are better, have a little bit of an economic boost. But Martin, what, are, have they accounted for everybody? I mean, I know they weren't expecting anything like this, and a lot of people weren't. So just like we're seeing with, with flood water, you may be seeing with... Well, and that's one of the reasons the National Guard's been called out in certain areas to assist local law enforcement. In some cases, they're literally going door to door. They're checking on the welfare. They've also brought out some of the heavy equipment to try to help with the removal of snow because it's so heavy. It isn't just a plow that can move it anymore. You need, like, earth-moving equipment. So, uh, so far, they are hoping that people are just staying put as far as trying to account for everybody. They don't have anybody known to be missing. And they don't have any rescue operations underway, but they will admit it's going to get worse tonight before it will get better. All right, Martin Savage, thank you very much. Reporting for us from West Virginia, a garage uh, where cars are literally floating in the water. I mean, that's just a, that's an amazing scene. It's not in a scene that you expect to see in Manhattan. David Mattingly is at a subway station near that parking garage uh, in lower Manhattan. And David, I know you've been today evaluating the subways going in and going out. What do you see? Well, what we're seeing is a lot like, like what you saw in that parking deck. You look around outside right now, things look pretty dry. Uh, cars moving around almost back to normal, but the problems are all down below. There are seven tunnels uh, that cross the East River for the subway. All seven of those tunnels took on water. And when you pump the water out, that's just one big job. Then you have to dry everything out. This is salt water. There's untold damage being done to the equipment that's been inundated down there. So at this point, there's been no uh, actual date set on when they think that might be repaired and everything back up and running the way it was before the storm. But there are millions of people who depend on this system, and there really aren't a lot of good options until the subway gets back up and running. Mayor Bloomberg was talking today about how the buses will start running tonight and into tomorrow for tomorrow's rush hour, but they'll be on a limited schedule, so they can't carry everybody. Uh, also, there's going to be about 4,000 taxis that are still in the city. They hope that number will go up. Those taxis have been uh, allowed to carry more than one fare at a time, but all the carpooling in the world is not going to take care of those millions of people again that depend on those subways and those, these stations, like the one behind me that is dark tonight, everyone wondering when they are gonna be able to get it back on those trains. Right, well, David Mattingly, thank you very much. Something perhaps that could be the most important thing, everyone, to determine when New York City, the financial capital of the world, is actually able to be that again. Uh and let everybody know, hey, then, you know, and it's, it's like we've seen with different storms and tornadoes. One house is okay, uh, two doors down, next thing you know, that house has got uh, significant damage. So we're, we're allowed to tell this story. We'll definitely relay it to some of the homeowners as we get out of here and head to Long Beach Island. But we're going to just uh, continue to explore and tell the story, Susan. All right, Mike, thank you. You're right. One house can look fine, the next safe. Also today, a statement from the developer of that high rise. It says all recommended measures to position the crane before the hurricane were taken, and the crane was... Hades. Take your pick of adjectives. It is just unbelievable to see this neighborhood transformed. It all began on the far end, far end of this lot. I'm going to step out of the way a little bit. Began on the far end. Still not 100% sure at the fuel source, but I can tell you there was some kind of gas. There was a down power line, an eruption of flames, and then with the action of a blowtorch with wind blowing from east to west, it raced right across this lot, right to where I'm standing, and then passed me that this other direction back towards the west. Unbelievable. Much of this just vaporized. Things that are still standing, some metal objects, some appliances here and there, some piping still around, a lot of this in water. And what's amazing, we spoke with some firefighters a short while ago that said that while they were battling the place, water was about this high. This high. So they're dealing with a flood, they're dealing with these explosive flames that are coming through. Uh, some of them up to 100 feet in height. Hard to believe anything like this could happen in this great community. And keep in mind, just a few uh, weeks ago, just over a month in fact, they actually had a tornado on the other end of this island. It's hard to believe how this unfolded. People here, blown away. Can't believe how much their, their neighborhood has changed, how quickly things can change. Uh, with, of course, uh, the storm coming through. And they thought maybe at worst they might deal with storm surge. But to have the storm surge and the flooded conditions and then have this on top of it, it is just uh, just unbelievable, beyond words. I can tell you that one of the big needs that people have here, and earlier this morning we went a little bit farther out towards the east with the community of Long Beach, and I can tell you the concerns for many of the people are about the same. Uh, there are things they certainly need, but one of the things they desire most is information. 
They're unable to get even just the simplest cell phone call to contact relatives that might be back to the West. Some of them just trying to reach a spouse, a child, maybe off to college. It is just impossible to get word out to many people. Obviously, we have this medium to tell the story of what they're going through, but when you look at this big picture and you try to put yourself with what they're dealing with, it, it, you know, it's just amazing. It, it is just a, a horrific incident. You know, we've been seeing this issues related to Sandy up and down much of the eastern seaboard. There have been communities that have been flooded out. There are so many people, hundreds of thousands, millions without power as we speak. But to see the flooding, see the power outages, and then this massive blaze, my goodness, what a nightmare for these people. There's one silver lining to this, and it is a tremendous silver lining, and that is the fact that there were no lives lost here. Certainly wonderful, but still, a massive cleanup remains, and they've got a long way to go to recover. That's a story from Breezy Point. Let's kick it back to you in the studio. All right, thanks. <laughs> summers underwater and completely devastated knowing friends who've lost their belongings their homes uh, dozens of people dead in the wake of Sandy and now we get new information from the National Weather Service regarding the power of the storm as she came ashore Surf City New Jersey recorded a wind, gu wind gust of 89 miles an hour uh, I think it's 95 and up is a cat 2 hurricane so 